Hi, I'm Theo. Welcome to Bibliography. I wanted to come out with a little shorter video this week um, because I read four books and three of them were duds. Um, and one of them I actually liked a lot and people seem to hate it, so I want to make the case for it. Um, so three of them, the first that I'm going to talk about actually come from my book of the month shelf. I am so far behind on my book of the month reads, but here are some that I managed to get off of it. And actually none of them I will be keeping. So great for me. I have more room on my shelves. Um, and we're going to go through them in the order in which I read them. So the first one I read is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This was sold to me as a romance about a fat girl who goes on like a reality TV dating show. But it, it's basically The Bachelor, specifically. Um, and she is The Bachelor. For some reason, I thought she was a contestant. Misogyny, I must assume. Um, my issue with this, I rated it four stars. Incredibly readable. It was exactly like binge watching um, an entire season of reality TV in like one go in that I did not stop and it was a fun time while it was happening and then as soon as it was done I felt dirty <laughs> and in hindsight I'm like oh kind of not great but it, you know readable and I liked the ending but you have to get through so much fat phobia and fat shaming to like get to your happy ending that at points I was like, oh God, stop punching me, I'm down. I'm down on the ground, stop it. Let me have my good time, Jesus. To the point where I was like, this isn't written for fat girls. It can't be because I don't want this much fat shaming in my fun romance book. Um, like I got it at the beginning. You have to set your stage. You have to give um, our protagonist something to work against. You have to give us a reason to root for her but her doubting herself and other people commenting about her body goes on till almost the very end and it is so painful to sit through as a fat woman like I don't know do fat do like skinny people read this and they're like oh my god I understand now in which case I guess it's good I never need to read this again because I just like it, 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 it's painful. The rewards were not worth the constant negativity and amount of talking about her own body and people talking about her body that could potentially be triggering to a reader who's experienced that in real life. Um, so like, honestly, maybe I downgrade this to a three, but it was enjoyable. I'm sure people are going to get this get something out of this. Um, I'm gonna lend this to my mom and see what comments she gives me and I'll uh, update those in the comments if um, I get any response from her about it. Um, because I don't know who this is for. Um, and I also, <laughs> fun side note, uh, I got through the whole book and um, opened the author bio and realized that the author served as the lead digital writer for Clinton in 2016, which <laughs> also was like a, punching while I'm down type situation, which to be clear, I'm coming from the left on this one. Um, <laughs> like I'm lefter than this woman. Although it did make sense why some of it, the vibes were very liberal is all I'll say. Number two on my, my uh, big reading week is everything we didn't say. This was another one I think I remember hearing good things about. And I just, I got nothing from this. I wound up rating, rating it uh, a two stars because it, it, in a thriller, I can excuse a lot. But what I can't excuse really, it's um, you have to either give me a good plot with like good twists or good characters that I root for. Like, you can give me one or the other. I'm honestly not that picky. If you give me one, I'll be satisfied pretty much. I, there were neither here. Um, like, the mystery is not that good. And the characters are... I, I didn't like them. I didn't care for them. Were there characters? Um, I'm going to spoil this a little bit because, honestly, I don't think it's worth your time. But the basic premise of this one is uh, it's a character 
13 years ago, there was a murder in her small town. That same summer, she got pregnant and then had a child out of wedlock. I don't know why I said it like that, but she had a child. This child stayed in town, being raised by her parents. Um, and so she's returned because someone's going to make a podcast about the murders and she knows something um, about what actually happened that she hasn't told anyone. So she's like, oh, no one can know my secret. I'm like, okay. Honestly, don't tell me you have a secret because then I'll be like, wow, you're really building up the fucking secret. I hope it's something good. It's not. It's dumb. Um, but my main thing with this is like, not only is the, the kind of twist, the reveal, the thriller aspects, the murder mystery, not that interesting, but the characters are just not great. Like the, the main, the heart of the story is this woman trying to connect with her 13 year old daughter, um, because she's been such an absent mother, but that thread is kind of like picked up where it's like, oh, they're going to bond over the mystery. And then it's kind of going like, we had to solve the mystery and the daughter's nowhere. Don't worry about it. And the other relationship that's kind of the, the real core of the book is the relationship with this woman and her baby daddy, the father of her child, who is apparently the dumbest man in the world. I thought he was malicious because that's the only thing that made sense to me because she romanticizes him in the past so much that I was like, he has to know that that child is his child. But apparently he doesn't, and he's never suspected it in 13 years, despite the fact that allegedly they look alike. So he's moved on. He's married another woman. He, they have four children or something. And like at the end of the book, it's like she's like, I revealed to him that my daughter was his daughter, and he cried, and he might leave his wife with four children. Who knows? Ha <laughs> ha! And it's like, you fuck. This man, he's a bad person. How are you not realizing it? Either that or he has, like, the lowest IQ possible. Anyways, two stars. All right. My third book of this week, and honestly the most disappointing one because I actually had high hopes for this, um, and maybe only because the cover is so pretty, but it's A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. I only just realized last night that Shay Earnshaw wrote The Wicked Deep, which I loved. I have it on my shelf. Um, <laughs> this was absolute ass. So the basic premise of this is um, there is a, a writer of children's books that goes missing. Our main character, Travis, is going to go find her because he has kind of supernatural gifts. He can see like echoes of, of things, of things that happened. Um, and that is the setup. And then it turns into a cult book. And then it turns into a plague book. And then it turns into the dumbest thing you've ever heard in your life. So I'm going to go full spoiler on this because I cannot explain to you what makes me so mad about this without explaining to you the context um, of what it is. How do I explain this? The cult book is really the biggest part of the book. The plague part is kind of just a subsection of the cult part. The explanation for the cult part, which you find out the cult leader has managed to convince our two main characters, including the guy from the beginning and the woman he was going to find, that they are completely different people. He managed to give them completely false memories um, and backgrounds and new names. Um, and then you find out he's done this with multiple people in the cult. I was like, okay, you've established magic exists in this world because that guy could literally see ghosts and shit. I guess he has magic too. No, <laughs> you find out that this man can hypnotize people and not like as a magic power, he learned it from a book. Uh, and it is the most frustrating twist of all time because there are other ways they could have done it. This is like a first pass of a manuscript. You go back and you're like, change the ending, that is not a good twist. Because, like, there are so many other ways you could have done it. Um, the, literally, so the moment before 
it's revealed that he learned the hip hypnosis from a book because one of the characters finds his hypnosis book, which he keeps in a closet that he locks people in because he's a genius. Um, she finds a sleight of hand magic book, like how to do magic book. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So like the test, if someone's infected with this fake plague, um, which the plague is fake, that was hypnotism. Um, so the way you test for if someone's infected with this plague is you cut the hand. If the blood is black and kind of like goopy, you're infected. If it's red, you're good. We have just been through a scene where someone gets the hand cut and it's black and so they, they get executed. And then they find the sleight of hand book and I was like, that's interesting, that's cool. The cult leader's been doing sleight of hand magic to convince everyone that there's a uh, a plague. He did some like, I don't know, like fake blood thing. That's that's a cool concept. That's interesting. And then immediately after that, she finds hypnotism book and she was like, he hypnotized us to all see black. And I was like, you couldn't have done it any other way. Any other way. So that's frustrating. It's also frustrating because a hundred or so pages in, my brain went, wait, no, this is M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Maybe, maybe, we'll give it a chance, we'll give it a chance. It's literally M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, but without the twist at the end of The Village that makes it cool. There's two twists in the M. Night Shyamalan, this one just goes for the first one, and I've seen The Village, like once, 10 years ago, and so I got absolutely nothing out of this one. Like, is this, has no one else read, has no one else watched The Village? Like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> also, and I completely missed this because at this point, I think I was just like, we're getting through this book. Um, so I missed this. On page 77, at least in my copy, there, she literally, there's a typo that completely gives uh, away the like, um, switched personalities thing, the, the hidden mystery where she's calling, she calls the character who is currently hypnotized to think he's a different person by the old person's name. It's 77 pages in, this is like 300 something book. Like what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. Also side note, I all, read another book recently from book of the month that had like a complete duplicated paragraph in it. So what's happening over there? Uh, so that's like a, a double thing where I'm like, there's printing errors in this and there's also like big editorial errors in this or like not even errors, just like do another couple passes, please God. I, it really does make me slightly concerned that like publishing, especially I know things have been delayed with Corona, but if you need to take an extra year or a couple months to like make a better book, please make a better book. Cause this was disappointing in many ways. All right, so the last book I wanna talk about is one that I might be the only person who likes this. Um, Cause all the reviews I've seen on YouTube and from other people I follow on Goodreads are incredibly negative. But this was a five star read for me. It is, the kind of horror that is so my shit that it is kind of incredible to me. That like other people who I, I usually um, agree with their opinions on books, I was like, I don't see it. I don't see it. It's Universal Harvester by John Darnielle, who I only realized at the end of the book was the Mountain Goats guy. I might need to start reading author bios first, but honestly, I've been having a good time going into everything blind as hell. So really hard to explain what's going on in this book. I'm gonna to try to describe to you the setup and then I'm going to try to describe the vibe and like what I got out of the book without like just sitting down and telling you exactly what happens start to finish because that is kind of how you have to describe it because a lot going on in this. The basic setup for this is kind of perfect horror movie. It's Jeremy works 
at a video store. And people are starting to report these scenes that are kind of intercut through the VHS movies of like the first few are like quiet kind of ambient noise in an empty room for like a minute and then it like continues with the movie and then some of them they start to get more and more upsetting there's like what appears to be an abduction um some torture some weird shit a chase uh outside of a farmhouse it's kind of um, turns in and it turns into this mystery where they're like putting it together because they're all on different VHS tapes. But if you take the scenes out of context, they make up one bigger narrative. So they're like, OK, we got to collect all these tapes. And Jeremy kind of pulls together all of these different people that he's connected with in this small town. And they start either investigating or they're just existing. And Jeremy kind of relates them sideways. Um, and then from there, there are four parts in total. The first part is Jeremy and the VHSs. The second part goes into the backstory of one of the characters from the first part. The third part kind of brings all those characters together. And then the fourth part is a different family moves into the house where the tapes were filmed. Um, and then it kind of, through their perspective, wraps up the whole story. Now, what I love about this is it gives me horror vibes, but without turning supernatural. Now, I don't know if that's what people wanted or were expecting, because I was kind of just like, this, this to me slaps. I don't want it to go supernatural, because honestly, that's, that's disappointing to me when it's like, and at the end, it was ghosts. Like, this is just, it has an explanation that is good, that makes sense in the context and that has a broader theme. Um, and it, it just, it, it works. <laughs> it works really well for me. Um, you find out exactly where the tapes come from, who was copying them onto the VHSs. There are some other smaller links, like timing wise, where I'm like, I would need to maybe read it again to like completely solidify it in my brain. But I feel like so many things got answered in a really satisfying way that I kind of don't understand when people are like, nothing happened. Because there are scenes where kind of it feels like nothing's happening, but what is happening is either something in the writing is giving you broader commentary on what the whole book is about, or you're getting smaller looks at these people and their lives. Um, and one of the things the narration does is give you alternatives. So the narrator is, um, it's a third person narration through most of it. We'll get to that. Um, but they're, they're recounting this story as if it's become urban legend. So they're like, in some versions of this story, this happens. In some versions, this happens. And who's to say what happened? Let's continue with the story. And that to me is fascinating. I love urban legend stories. I love the uncertainty of not knowing what happened, of characters go missing and there's like, they give you options of what could have happened. They're all sad, um, but they're all equally possible. And it's like, well, shit, I'm gonna be sitting here thinking about that for a while. And in the end, what this is truly about is loss and looking for people when they're gone. and trying to find people in not great ways. Um, and there is a specific moment with Jeremy's father and one of the tapes that really kind of clinched it for me where I was like, it. everyone's looking for someone, even if they're dead, even if they're gone, like for sure, not even missing, dead. Everyone's, there's one person they're like looking for that they, they will try to see in like as a ghost maybe or as a thing that happened in the past. There's, um, everyone has a person they're missing, whether or not it's like, cause they're literally missing or they're dead or they, they left or they're not friends anymore. That, that's what I really took away from it. And that to me is horror. <laughs> like the best horror is something that's like, hey, wouldn't it be fucked up if this happened? But also, wouldn't it be fucked up if, your friends and family stop talking to you. Um, and so I found that super uh, fulfilling as a reader. 
And I also want to say, I, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this, the way the narration kind of cuts in between tenses is super interesting to me. So like halfway through the book, it switches from this third person omniscient to a first person singular. And it scared the shit out of me because I wasn't aware that that's what we were doing. So it's like, and he was looking at the tape and you could see where my hand slipped. And I was like, your hand? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Uh, and then it just continues. And you do later come back to the first person and you find out who that narrator is. But it scared the absolute bejesus out of me. Uh, it, in a very subtle way, I, I kind of was more like freaked out about it because I was really like, take me away. I was ready for it to take me on a journey and a journey it took me on. Um, so yeah, if any of that sounds appealing to you, I'd definitely check out Universal Harvester. I really liked it. I now want to check out his first book, which was Wolf in a White Van. Um, and if you read, so if you read any of these, also comment below about your opinions and if it was different than mine. Um, would love to hear about your opinions of one to watch because that one is honestly the one I could see the case for people liking a lot. But these two, God, what, <laughs> the typo that just like completely reveals the twist like super early on is so funny to me. Like no one peer read this. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking this out. I hope to make some shorter content as well as some longer form um, videos I have coming up. Uh, and thanks for giving it a watch.